Chapter 5 The Blessing of the Young Couple by the Patriarchs The Lord Arranges Four More Marriages After this action, Abaddon summoned Jared, Enoch and Methuselah before him and said to them, Listen, your hut harbouring friends, brothers and fathers has sufficient space to shelter not only Lamech but also his wife. As long as you will be living together in peace and unity under one roof, loving only me, I shall live in your midst. It does not matter to your love, whether visibly or invisibly. I shall show myself often to you and bless your house. And so do take in the young couple in my name. Amen. And the three prostrating themselves before Abaddon, thanked him in great humility for this immense grace and mercy. But Abaddon bade them rise up again, so as to receive the young couple in accordance with the ancient custom of love. And they promptly rose, took the couple into their midst, and blessed it. After the blessing, they kissed first Gamela, and then Lamech, on their forehead, and promised them their fatherly blessing in the Lord's name for all times. Afterwards, in keeping with the will of Abaddon, they led the couple also to Adam and Eve, so that Adam might bless Lamech and Eve bless Gamela. the first complete men of the earth, were deeply moved, so much so that they could hardly utter the words of blessing. And Eve said to Adam, weeping, Behold, you head of my life, this pair is telling me without words how we ought to have behaved before the Lord. Oh, in that case, no dark morass would have formed under our feet. Oh, that the curse could ever be taken from the earth. And Abaddon said to Eve, Your distress is justified. But behold, here before your very eyes, the foundation has been laid by me, for that source out of which, one day, a living water will gush forth over the whole earth, washing it clean of the old curse. With Gamela the pure line will begin, and once the earth will be baptised over and over with the living water, it will soon be purified through Lamech's fire, out of the heavens, whereby it will be thoroughly cleansed of its curse and will again become a star in the firmament which will please me, for its light will send far-reaching rays through all the eternal spaces of infinity. No other star of infinity shall tell of the most sublime wonders of my mercy as the earth will. But nowhere else let there be such a curse upon the serpent as on this scene of my mercy. I tell you, Eve, where I have poured out my greatest mercy, also my greatest wrath shall be poured out. All the innumerable stars shall be judged according to their manner by the angels. But the earth's generation of serpents and vipers, I myself shall judge, giving it the deserved reward in the eternal fire of my most severe anger 
and my most bitter wrath. Verily, verily, the dragon of Cain with all his captives will forever be punished in the densest fire of my wrath for his great iniquity, and there will never be an end to their great pain, and no one will hear their fearful wail of torment. They will be plunged into total oblivion, and no one will ever remember them again. And I shall forever close my ears to them, avert my eyes from them, and blot them out from my heart completely, so as to enable me to forget them completely, their names shall be completely blotted out from the memory of my love, and they shall have forever out of my living flaming wrath a most terrible life, which will be endless like the life of my love and of all of my children in the greatest happiness and bliss. Therefore, Eve, keep your heart close to me and be without concern. You cannot cleanse the earth with all your worry. This is why I have revealed this to you, so that you may be unconcerned because of the earth. Behold, it shall soon come to pass that the flood of sin will drive the waves over the mountains and up to the clouds. But behold, this married couple's fruits I shall carry on my hands across all the deadly waves and shall afterwards prepare for them a new, pure and immensely fertile land. Therefore rejoice at this my great promise in the peace and love of your heart. For I have rejuvenated and purified you in this gamella. Comprehend it well in your heart. Amen. Thereupon he summoned Methuselah and Zuriel with his other four daughters, and spoke, Methuselah, you still have four good sons, whom I like and value. Behold, here, their wives. And you, Zuriel, behold, behind Lamech, the four brothers whom I want to give to your daughters. And Zuriel wept with joy and said, O Jehovah, how did I become worthy of such grace before you? And Abdom replied, Because you fought the world valiantly, and returned to me these your five only children, who now see, yet are as pure as they were when I gave them to you blind. However, these four couples shall not dwell in the house of Jared, but they will find at a proper distance around the hut of Jared their new, clean dwellings provided with everything, where they shall live in all the purity and chastity of their hearts. Then I will at the proper time give also to them the right number of children of the light. And now also, you four new couples, come to me, so that I may bless you and accept you as my children. Amen. And the four couples prostrated themselves before Abaddon and thanked him from the bottom of their hearts. But he lifted them up and, blessing them, turned them over to the patriarchs for their blessing, and finally said to Zuriel, who in his immense joy was weeping, 
Suriel, now you also must come to me to receive the greatest reward for your faithfulness. Behold, I now turn you into a great angel and appoint you a faithful guardian and invisible protector of all my children. And from now on, you will at all times behold my countenance and rejoice in my light. Amen. And he touched Zuriel, and Zuriel became luminous, shining more than the sun, and soon disappeared from the sight of all.